sustainability process is integrated with your financial um, performance in the data. Now, the issue in respect of what, but let me just a uh, little bit on integrated reporting. I think that this is a phenomenally, a phenomenally difficult thing to do. As an economist, I think it's not possible to do that yet. We don't yet have these standards. We don't have these methodologies. And frankly, uh, if we're not able even to get the easier things, the GRI three, or even if you have accountants who can't get the financial accounts correct, to move to this integrated reporting without proper methodologies, I think it's just too much, too much too soon. Um, nonetheless, that's where the process is, is or the, the, the push, the stakeholder push, uh, is going. Now, I want to mention something which is absolutely central to the issue of uh, CSR reporting, sustainability reporting. In fact, without this concept, you cannot do CSR reporting. And that is this issue of materiality. You must report on things which are material. And what does material mean? It means it's important from a sustainability perspective for your company. The GRI is very good at this because it tells us precisely how to determine what is material and what is not material. For an accountant, they also use this term, material, materiality. And for an accountant, it's very simple. If the financial number is small relative to another number, let's say your revenue, then they will say it's not material because it's, it's, a, it's a small number. And they won't report it. So for example, if they had a fine for an environmental spill, and that fine was, let's say, 500,000 ringgit, but the profit of the company was 500 million ringgit, they would say it's not material to report that fine because it's too small. From a sustainability perspective, size of the fine doesn't matter. Whether it's small or big or whatever, it's the fact that you had a fine. That's what's important. Why? Because your stakeholders care about that issue. And <clears throat> the question of what is a, a highly material issue depends upon two things. Do your stakeholders care? Does it matter for your company? Okay. When we apply these, uh, these two principles to every issue that could be potentially reported, bear in mind GRI 3 has uh, hundreds of individual uh, topics on which, uh, which you could potentially report. Many companies say, how can I possibly report on all of those things? Well, the answer is you don't have to report on all of those things. You have to report on the things which are material. And how do you determine whether they are material or not? You look at a matrix like this. What is the concern of my stakeholders and what is the impact on my company? And if your stakeholders care about it and it's important to your company, yes, you must report. If your stakeholders don't care about it and it's not uh, important to your company, then you don't have to report in detail. However, you do have to say that you have attended to that issue and that you're not reporting to it because of the materiality. Assessment. In a Malaysia context, this, it, it, to my view, this is a, 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 one of the biggest issues which determines why companies are not reporting. Because they look at the GRI G3, for example, or even at the first Malaysia uh, guidelines, which are not particularly prescriptive, but as we said before, they're quite liberal and quite open. You have a lot of options there. Or well, they look at some of the other international guidelines for the industries, or now the ISO 26000 uh, process, and they say it's just too big, and I can't possibly report on all of these things, and therefore they don't need to start, they don't report on anything at all. However, the application of the principle of materiality says looking at each of these things, if it's not relevant, you don't have to spend a great deal of time reporting on it. If it is relevant, you do have to spend some time reporting on it. And when you do this, you can actually reduce these hundreds of potential uh, topics on which you should report. You reduce them just to a handful. And in fact, if you look at the DG report, it's 
example, this is a relatively thin report. And with all of the issues, as far as I can see, I mean, having looked at it, the issues are the material issues. Whereas if you look at some other companies, they are now producing reports with sometimes over 100 pages. And they're getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker these reports because they're trying to report on every single topic, even if it's not material. And of course, this then is costly. It reduces the barrier for the company to take on the task in the first place because it makes it more complicated. And ultimately, nobody reads it. But they will read the DG report. But they won't read a CSR report in three volumes. So what is it that we really want to see if we were just to cut it down in, in a nutshell, okay, without going through every single one of the potential topics? Well, like Sumitra said before, it's very difficult to say what it is you want to see, but it is very clear what you don't want to see. And in looking at what you don't want to see, you get an idea of what it is you want to see. It's strange, right? We're looking at it the wrong way around. So if we're looking at, for example, we're looking at environmental reporting, what we don't want to see is greenwash. Okay? What we don't want to see, and Matthias is just coming to the room, so you might not want to like this, but what we don't want to see are tree planting stories. Okay. Right? Like Michael Jan said, oh, no. if you plant a thousand trees, by the next week, less than a hundred are left. <laughs> because the birds eat them, and the sun dries them, and they're not irrigated. And then by the end of six months or a year, virtually none of them are there. Tree planting is a good thing. I would encourage people to do it. But it's got to be part of a properly structured environmental program. And it can never and must never be part of an excuse for not having an environmental program. Similarly, Earth Hour, the World Wildlife Fund Earth Hour, we all like to have this Earth Hour awareness program switching off but switching off your lights on a Saturday evening, when no one is in the office anyway, <coughs> is not going to be part of an integrated environment. <laughs> so we don't want to see this. What we do want to see is a clear statement of a fit-for-purpose environmental policy. That means if you're a company with a small environmental footprint, you should have a relatively simple, relatively straightforward policy on environmental matters which probably will go no further than reduce, reuse, recycle. But if you're a plantation company and you say, we have a, a environmental policy, we reduce, reuse, recycle, that's not going to be fit for purpose because we need to see how about your biodiversity protection? How about your certification? How about your integrated management system? How about sustainable farm work? In other words, a fit for purpose policy on environment has to reflect in. We need to see a clear statement on the EMS, the Environmental Management System. And we need to see, importantly, data. Data, 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 data. That's what the CSR reports should be about. Now, not narratives, not stories. The number of clients who have, have and are continuing to ask me to write a story, there's a this, 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 this report is full of data, there is no story. They, the pros, huh? they want pros, they want a narrative. But I say, this is a CSR report, it's not a Harry Potter novel. <laughs> and, and my job <laughs> is not to wizard away your environmental problems. My job is to report clearly and openly, honestly, on what you have. And if you don't have it, I'm not going to report it. And that's what we want to see. We want to see data on, for example, greenhouse gas measurement, we want to see uh, waste reduction, and importantly on green products and innovations, the type of thing that, that Gerhard was talking about as part of sustainable production. In other words, your process. In the workplace, what we don't want, and what we still see, we don't want a startup goes to an open house. That's not part of a workplace policy. That is not a, 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 a consistent or structured or sensible uh, employee engagement process. It's nice, by all means. <laughs> by all means, invite me to the open house, but don't imagine <laughs> that that, uh, that takes the place of a properly structured engagement process. We don't want these general statements which every report has. Our employees are our greatest assets. If that were the case, every employee in Malaysia 